Yo, what is up you guys? It's Grim here and welcome back to day three of the Redstone Academy. Last episode, we went over understanding how to properly power blocks, which is a key component to know before anything else. It will teach you how to run redstone line and the difference between hard and soft power blocks and also active blocks. Go check it out on the link below if you're interested in that. In this episode, we will be getting into the more complex mechanics and uses of redstone torches and repeaters. Just a friendly reminder, the link to each world is in the description of the respective video, meaning that day one will be in day one and day two and day two and so on. One last thing, this series is also based upon the bedrock edition of Minecraft and the results may vary between versions, however the concepts are the same. With all that being said, let's get right into it. All right, you guys. So in front of me here, I have day three, which is just a bunch of torches and repeaters. Now, most of you will probably be thinking right now, you know, I know everything about torches. You know, repeaters is very simple, right? And well, uh, yeah, no, it actually gets really, really complicated. So now with all that being said, let's just go ahead and hop right into it. So right here, we have the rest on torch. This is a permanent power source unless switched off by a powered block. So those of you that watched last episode obviously know that if you power a block, it will turn on the torch, and if you unpower it, the torch will turn back on. Now, I wanted to go over a little bit more of a specific use case scenario. Let's say that you wanted to split lines and have one on and the other one be off. Well, you could go ahead and actually do something like this, where the, the torch up here is going to power this line, which is going to power this, and then the repeater underneath is going to take an input when you invert this block, meaning that if you saw power this block, the repeater is going to take an input and power that, but it's going to turn the rest on torch off turning off the top one and then vice versa if i went ahead and turned it off then the repeater is not going to take an output from this block because the torch does not power the block it's sitting on only the block that is on top of it and then that block is going to be hard powered and obviously sending out redstone signal to this redstone lamp right here all right next up we have the torch tower the torch can be used to make a torch tower note every torch will cause a one tick delay so a torch tower is as simple as this it's just revolving torches with that they are attached to the block right and then what they are doing is they are hard powering the block above them which will invert this torch so then this torch is not giving off a signal which means that this torch um, above it is going to be normal meaning that the next torch is obviously going to be inverted but then when you give a power source to this block right here it is going to invert the entire torch tower and you're going to get input on top however unlike the uh the transparent one over there this torch tower does have a one tick delay per every single torch. I don't know if you can see that when I turn it on and off, it does take a second to travel upwards. All right, and next we have a little section on what blocks it actually powers. So torches will hard power the block directly above it, but will only make the surrounding blocks active. It does not power the block placed on as said earlier. So as you can see right here is obviously powering all the blocks above it, it is hard powering this block right here and activating the blocks on the side. So if I go ahead and power the block, then it is obviously going to turn off. And if I unpower the block, then it is going to turn back on. All right. So this is just going to be a little perspective right here to see like what exactly is being powered, hard powered and soft powered and activated and so on. So if I go ahead and turn all of these on off, whatever you want to call it in this video, I'm going to say if I go ahead and power the blocks, the torches are on. All right. So if I go ahead and just power the blocks that the torches are on, then that means that the entire circuit is going to be turned off now like i said before the top blocks are going to be the only ones that are going to be hard powered so if i go ahead and let the uh the the block free then that's going to allow the torch to hard power this block powering this same thing with the repeater is going to get powered now if i come over here and flick it on nothing is going to happen because the surrounding blocks are only activated versus the top block which is actually hard powered now if you remember from last video active blocks are able to take an input right but they are not able to like you know take an output whether you use a tool or just redstone dust they are just taking what they need and they are not up for sharing all right and the final thing on torches today it is going to be you can make a basic clock using a redstone torch place a torch on the side of the block and then proceed to go ahead and place a piece of redstone on top of the block that the torch is on as seen right here and then what you do is you place a block on top so if i go ahead and unpower it it's going to just repeatedly what, what's going to happen here is i'm actually going to explain it so the torch is powering this block right and then this block is powering this block and then this block is going to get powered which is going to invert this torch but then once the torch gets inverted this block is not going to be powered anymore which means that this turns off which means that the torch gets powered again and it's going to power this block power this unpower itself unpower unpower power and it just makes a clock as you can see right here now as you can also see right there it burnt out so as seen in the book right here i went ahead and put 
best results with two torches this is what i mean so you have two torches right here and you can go on and flick the lever right and that's going to activate it now you can go ahead and put repeaters put redstone dust it doesn't matter you have to hook them up to the torches though and you'll get just very fast repeating signals and you can change it with longer ticks or shorter ticks on your repeaters all right you guys and with all the torches being wrapped up we can go ahead and hop into the repeater so redstone repeater an item or tool used to repeat a redstone signal back to full strength of 15 anywhere between one to four ticks of delay so what's going on here is this is just a little thing i am not actually going to extend it out 15 blocks just for the sake of demonstrations but as you can see here the 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 signal right here is really bright and it gets a little dimmer goes through the repeater gets bright gets dim and as you can see it's just going to continuously get dimmer as you get farther away from it and then up next we have the pulse delay so repeaters come with a little redstone torch right here it's adjustable and it's nice you can design it and you can put it however you want to suit your build so what that means is each one of these is going to have an extra tick delay that's one tick two tick three tick four tick and it can be seen by flicking on this lever as you can see there it's gonna do like a, a little like a it's gonna be powered in a line i guess you could say i can't think of anything but you you know what i'm trying to say it just powers in in a really fancy manner and you can use these for like fancy lights and stuff and then i went ahead and put this lever right here for those of you that are thinking oh it's because you powered it from the left side no you flick it on you're gonna get the exact same results because redstone dust is instant and then the repeaters will go ahead and go ahead and process that through their delays and then give an output once the delay tick is up all right and this is when we start to get a little bit more practical on the uses for repeaters so repeaters are a one-way street they only travel in one direction as indicated by the arrow on the device this is especially useful when not wanting to make circuits that turn on with different switches so what you can see here is you have a redstone like you know you have a redstone line right here and you have two redstone lamps and one switch only activates one of them now let's say that you're doing that and you only want one switch to be activated because you're on like you know one part but let's say you get to part two and you accidentally forget to activate part one well you can go ahead and put a repeater here and that's going to allow you to go and activate two without the need of activating one so you can go ahead and activate both of them if you forget to activate a switch this is obviously like a case-by-case -case basis you know sometimes you do need to use for this sometimes you don't sometimes it's like you know you only want a one way for your pulse extender which is typically what i use it for and so on stuff like that so this is a case-by-case -case thing but it's still something that you need to know all right and i hate to break it to you but this this is where i'm probably gonna start losing people this is where it gets a little confusing all right so here this this book this is knowledge right here signal locking a repeater will be locked if there is a powered repeater going directly into the side of it. The repeater can be locked on or off. So right here, you can see I can go ahead and flick this on, flick this off freely as I want. But if I go on a power repeater in, you'll see a little like a, a little bedrock thing right here. And if I go to flick it on and off, it's not going to change. Now, this can be especially useful in a couple different cases. Let's say you want to make a locking door or something. You know, you, you, you can lock it from the inside and then you can turn it on and off. Now, the same thing works for when it's when it's actually on. OK, let's go and turn it on and then we can lock it, turn it off and it's going to stay powered even if we turn it off. But then if we go ahead and unpower the side repeater, then that's going to unlock the circuit, turning it off. Now, just a really quick demonstration. It does not work with a regular redstone line. You have to use a repeater into the side of it. Okay, so I went ahead and put this together. It's really impractical, but it, it gets the point across. If you turn this on uh, using the one-way street mechanic, right? So you, you only get this signal, okay? Now, let's say that you want this one to be turned on but you only want this one to be turned on. You know that they're wired together, but you only want this one to be on. So what you can do is lock this repeater and now only this one will turn on. Well, now let's say that you want this one to stay on and you don't want it to be flicked off. Well, you can go ahead, power this, lock this, unpower this, and now this signal right here, this will always be on and you cannot turn it on or off. Okay, and finally, I have a little challenge for you guys. So right here, this example shows how you can use locking repeaters to make a lock on your door. So go ahead and pause the video after I show you what this does. So as you can see here, I open the door and I can walk in. Now I can lock it using this lever right here, meaning that no one can get in. However, using this button up here, I can still get out. But as you can see right here, when I try to press the button, I can no longer get in. And if I go ahead and flick the lever, it will go ahead and open up again. So my challenge for you is to pause the video and try and make this and I'll see you in a second. 
All right, you guys, so this circuit is very, very simple. So if we just break down here, we have a little line right here where the button was going into this repeater. And I said the four ticks just to give us a little bit more of a delay to get in because iron doors are annoying like that. And then once we're in, I have the lever right here, which will go ahead and power this, which is going to lock this repeater. So it's a very simple little circuit, but it's definitely an easy way to mess with your friends. You're like, hey, my door is locked. Don't come in. And they're like, what do you mean your door is locked? Well, the door is literally locked. Okay, and for this last section, I debated and thought about this for quite a while, introducing you guys to these, but I figured that you might need some of these basic components and basic circuits to go ahead and actually, you know, start experimenting and learning redstone. So these are by no means practical circuits, but they are something to get you in the door and to get your feet a little bit wet and knowing what you're going to be getting into later in the series. So starting off with one of the most basic circuits, we have the repeater clock. These are basic clocks for you to use until you progress far enough in this series and learn more advanced clocks. So as you can see here, if you flick the lever on really quickly, then you're going to get a little repeating clock. And what that's going to do is, it's just going to allow you to go and repeat a signal over and over and over again. Let's say that you had a dispenser that was filled up with fireworks and you just wanted to shoot off and over and over again, well, you can use this. And if you want to turn it off, you can go ahead and turn it off like that. And let's say that you want to be a little bit longer, you can go ahead and set all these delays to four, and then you can go like this, and it's going to just make the clock a little bit slower. Okay, next up, I have the clock that I normally use, which is where you place a redstone torch on a redstone block, and that will, the block will instantly invert the torch, but after it sends out a little one take pulse, as you can see here, it will go ahead and power it really quickly, and you will get a ridiculously fast clock with using only repeaters and redstone. All right, next up, we have some basic repeater pulse extenders. These are basic pulse extenders for you to use until you progress far enough in this series, which that, that's basically what every single book says. So as you can see right here, what this does is when you press the button, this power is going to be instantly transmitted to this redstone line, which is instantly going to stop power this block powering this lamp. Well, in the meantime, the repeater is getting powered. And once it powers up, it will go ahead and take over the power source powering this. And then the redstone line is going to turn off, but the repeater is going to stay powered because it's set to four ticks, as you can see right here. As you can see right here, it goes ahead and powers it, but this is hard powering this block, which is why this is staying lit. But basically the, the concept is the redstone line instantly powers it and then the repeater will take over and power it just a little bit longer. And then this next repeater pulse extender is quite simple. It, it simply just it powers it instantly and then goes around in a loop. And then once it's just about to, to give out right here, this repeater takes over the signal and it makes it a little bit of a longer pulse. Okay, next up we have the repeater pulse delayer. These are basic pulse delayers for you to use until you progress far enough, blah, 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 blah. So what's going on here is when you press this button, you can go ahead and set a repeater to one, two, three, four ticks, right? You press the button, it's just gonna take a little bit longer for the repeater to go ahead and activate. Meaning that if you have like an iron door or something, it'll give you a second or two to go ahead and actually line yourself up so that you don't miss the shot. Or let's say you have a piston door and you don't wanna get killed or crushed or anything you, you put a pulse delay on there or a pulse extender you know you could use either one of those and it would just give you a little bit more time to actually get through and last but not least i i debated showing this one especially because it is a really advanced circuit and might confuse you but i figured that you might want to be introduced to these early so that you can grasp the concept repeater toggleable flip-flop also known as a t flip-flop these are basic T flip-flops for you to use until you progress far enough. So what a T flip-flop is, is, it's just a toggleable on off switch. So when I press this button, this lamp is going to turn off. When I press this button, the lamp isn't going to turn on. So I'm going to try and explain this the easiest way possible. All right, so I confused myself like three times trying to explain this. This is take number four, let's go. All right, so what's going on here is you have the bus in here, which is just obviously the power source leading in here, which is just going to lock the repeater constantly whenever the button's off right so that's that part of the circuit nothing else to do with that so now here so currently this is locked off well that's because this repeater took too long to go ahead and power this meaning that it locked up by before uh it it could get another power signal meaning that this all, a whole circuit stays on but if you go ahead and press this again what you'll see is it will then get powered immediately powering this block inverting this which is then going to allow everything in here to become unpowered. But then once again, it gets locked quick enough to where it will not actually lose the power and it gets locked. So I hope that made sense. I really tried to explain it the best I could. 
Oh my gosh, my even my brain hurts. So like I said, don't think about this too much. You will learn more practical designs. This is more or less just a copy paste thing for you to put in your builds right now and just know that it will work. All right, you guys, with all that being said, I really hope that you did enjoy this day of redstone academy this was definitely a little bit more of a confusing day because i introduced you to some circuits do not take those and think about them really hard because you will learn more compact and easier to understand circuits later on however for now i want you to experiment with, re with repeaters and learn about them and torches and just experiment with them to where when you actually learn the more advanced ones you will have the basics and the knowledge and the background of everything that you need to know as far as repeaters torches and when we get to compare and stuff like that all i'm trying to say is start with the basics do not jump into d latches toggleable flip-flops rs nor latches and gates or net latches anything and just anything like that just don't even worry about it so go ahead experiment make locking doors do whatever you want and uh go ahead and check out discord if you're interested in patreon i always appreciate every single person that joins and with all that being said i've been grim and i will see you in the next one peace out